Hello, hello, my wonderful friends. No, my lovely friends. <laughs> well, you are wonderful too. <laughs> that just felt wrong. Uh, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the platform called Post Crossing and why I think it's a great place to go in and get connected with people and eventually find some pen pals. So my last video I did about the my big giant junk journal with all the happy mail in it and Jennifer had written in the comments and asked me how do you find pen pals and this really is the the million dollar question you know how do you find pen pals there's no easy answer in the sense that there are all kinds of groups Facebook groups, online groups, like there's a lot of places out there where you can go and sign up. Now, I've never done any of these groups, so I'm not speaking from experience. Um, my pen pals that I have, I either found through Post Crossing or through Friends of Friends or through Instagram or other places like that. So I've never actually gone in and joined a official pen pal matchmaking kind of group. But I know other people have and they've been successful. So I'm talking about post crossing today because that's been my experience and that, you know, that's where I've had some luck. So I'm going to do a quick little synopsis here of why I like post crossing and the things that are really great about it. And then on the other hand, some of the criticisms that I hear people say and the things that they're not super keen about and that they don't like. So I'm going to try and give you a very quick overview so that you can decide if maybe this is something that you would like to, to check out for yourself. And it is good for people who have a ton of pen pals and love sending postcards and for people who have no pen pals and maybe just, you know what, maybe you just want practice writing postcards, which sounds a little bit goofy, but... Every once in a while, you're kind of like, eh, what to write, what to write, what to write, especially to a complete stranger. So post crossing, uh, one of the bonus, the, the bonus really is that it's free to sign up. So it's free to join. Anybody can join. All you do is you go in and you create a little profile for yourself. You give them the important information and they give you a little box to talk about the things that you like, the things that you're interested in. Now, that's not necessarily going to determine what kind of postcard you get, but it will give the person a really good idea of who you are and the kind of postcard that you might like to receive. <laughs> Sophie's being a weirdo. <laughs> it snowed here today. It's the second day of spring today and it snowed last night and it snowed today. So hence the turtleneck and uh, it's freezing and the girls have been inside all day. So they have a little bit of cabin fever. So you've been forewarned. <laughs> um, so it's, it's just that simple to go in and get yourself set up in post crossing. <clears throat> what happens is, is that, and again, I will show you how you will go in and, and find somebody or how you get somebody to send postcards to. So post crossing works in a way that is very random. It's not anonymous, but it's random. So you basically, you go in and you say, I want to send a postcard and they're like, okay. <laughs> and then bing, bang, buoy, they send you the name and of address and a profile of the person that you've been matched with. And again, it's totally random. It can come from anywhere in the world. You have no idea where this person's gonna come from. Now, because you have been put into the system, because you have agreed to send a postcard, you in turn get your name put in and then you become part of that random picking process and when somebody goes and says, hey, I want to send a postcard today, boom, they get you. So from that, from, from that aspect, it's, it's fun because you never know where you're going to get a postcard from and you never know who's going to send it. So 
that then in turn becomes part of the issue for some people is that they don't like the random part of it, which I can understand. Um, the thing is with the post crossing, it's just postcards. You don't write letters. 99% of the times you don't put anything in an envelope. It's just you writing a postcard. Maybe you put some stickers and a little bit of washi tape to decorate it on the back, but that's it. You put the stamp on it, off it goes to the country of origin or of destination. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit of a frozen brain. Um, and, and don't pay attention to the hair either because I had to wear a hat all day. Um, <clears throat> meaning a winter hat, dirty pool. So how you know about this process and how the cards get um, put back into the system once you know that the card has been sent and received, when you sign up and you go in and you say, today I want to send a postcard, um, it comes with an identification number. And you absolutely 1000% have to put that identification number on the postcard. Because then what happens is, um, when the person receives the postcard, they go into post crossing, they put that code and the number in, and then that card is registered as delivered. Everybody knows that the card is, is where it's supposed to be. And then, you know, the whole system just keeps going on and on and on. If you don't put the identification number on the card, the person can't register it when they receive it. And then it's lost and everybody's really sad. <laughs> so identification number is the most important thing you put on the postcard besides the address of where it's going. Okay, so it's easy. Again, you don't have to be, you know, there, there's nothing complicated about it. There's nothing complicated about what you need to write on the back of the postcard. So now let's talk quickly about, oh, Sophie Darlin. No, honey, you've got to whoop, scooch down for right. Oh, you could sit on my lap if you wanted to. Um, let's talk about <clears throat> sending the postcards, what kind of postcards. So here's the thing. Um, when you start... I believe they give you somewhere between six to eight address, like you have six to eight times to go in and get a postcard. And then what they want to see is that you're actually going to participate. They want you to send those cards. They want those postcards to get to their de destination to where they need to be. And then once you do that for a few times, then they'll up your limit. So right now, I believe I'm sitting at 12 postcards. I get 12 postcards. Now, you can do those 12 postcards. You can ding, 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 all in one day. And then you're like, okay, now I've got 12 or 6 or 8 or whatever your limit is. I've got those cards to send out. Maybe you're like, you know what, today I only have time to do one postcard or two postcards. I'm going to leave the rest for later. So it's, you, you, can, you can pick and choose how much time that you want to dedicate to writing your postcards and getting your postcards out. They ask that you send your postcards out, I think it's like in, in no more than a week. So if you go in and get, you get the addresses of the people to send the postcards to on a Monday, you should really have them sent out by the following Monday as a courtesy, right? Um, the other thing is to understand is that when somebody, when you, when you get the information about who you're going to send the postcard to, you get the information right there on post crossing. They also email you the information as well. So if for some reason you can't find the address on the actual post crossing website, then you can, you can still find it in, um, in your, your email, in your inbox. The person that you're sending the postcard to does not get a notification. They don't know that the postcard is coming, which is kind of part of the fun, right? Because you're like, do, 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 do. And then you go to your mailbox, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie, mommy's trying to make a video. Um, and then you're like, oh, look, a postcard for me, right? I wonder where it's from. So, um... It's a, it's a, 
it's a very well-oiled machine. It works very smoothly. It's really easy to do. Oh, so we were talking about sending what sent postcards to send. So you will find that some people have a very short bio that says, you know, hi, my name is Bob. I live in the U.S. and I'm retired. You'll find that there's a lot of retired people here. I'm retired and I used to, you know, be an engineer on a train or I used to whatever. And these are sorts of some of the things I sort of like. Sophie, <laughs> you got to scooch this way so mommy can still see the camera. Um, and conversely, you will find that there's people like, hi, my name's Bob. I like this, 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 this. <laughs> there's a whole list. Because in the, in what post crossing says is you cannot demand that somebody send you any kind of postcard but you are allowed to state what your preferences are so first of all do not feel obligated and think that you have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on postcards trying to to match up what cards you have with everybody else's um preferences because that's going to cost you a fortune um and some people will say things like, you know, most people are just happy to get a postcard. They're like, I don't really care what it is. Just send me something. Um, some people will, you know, they'll say, you don't know what to write on the back of a postcard. You know, tell me something about yourself or tell me what kind of, what movies do you like? What books do you like? What book have you recently read? Um, some people might say, what's your, tell me about something about, the food in your country. What is your favorite food? Like it's really just really simple everyday stuff. You know, people will say, um, do you have pets? Tell me about your pets. Um, what do you do for a living? I would love to know. I mean, because it's so random, you know, they're getting a, po you're getting a postcard from Sean in Ecuador you have no idea who Sean is. So it is kind of fun when sh if Sean writes, hi, my name Sean, and I don't know, I work at a radio station, and I, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like it's so, it, it's basic, it's just a few lines. But it is nice when people put in their profile the kind of things that they might like to know. Um, you'll find that some people will say, I don't speak English very well, um, but I'm learning. So could you please write something about yourself in English so I can learn what those words might mean, whatever that is. Um, some people, yeah, I mean, it, it really is a community and people are very friendly and they really are just interested in knowing some small little quick fact about you or your country um, where you live. Like sometimes I just write something like, well, my name is Lisa, I live in Canada. I have two beautiful Siamese cats and I live at the most Southern tip part of Canada. And then I like to sometimes say something like, where I live, I'm two hours west of Toronto but I'm two hours, now I always get this wrong, northeast of Detroit, or I'm two hours uh, southwest of uh, Buffalo, New York. I am two hours from Niagara Falls. So it kind of gives people a rough idea, especially, especially for people who are far away, um, you know, they don't necessarily know where I live, but they'll be like, oh, I know Detroit. That's a famous American city. And they're like, oh, you're only two hours from Detroit. That's interesting. Um, or sometimes I might say something like, you know, it takes a full week to drive across the country if you want to drive from Halifax to Vancouver. So I love you and I want you near, but that's not the best place right now. And that's true. I've done it. <laughs> You have to drive a whole week to get across the country um, from Halifax to Vancouver. So my point really is that the things that you might think might be mundane will be really interesting to somebody else. Now, you might ask yourself, well, Lisa, <laughs> if this is so random, how did you meet 
your favorite pen pals. When you sign up for Post Crossing, you can indicate whether or not you are interested in direct swaps. And what a direct swap is basically is that you're swapping postcards with somebody off the post crossing grid, right? So in my bio, I have that I love Halloween, <laughs> which is not a shock to anybody who knows me. However, there are a lot of people out there who also really either enjoy Halloween, who are very intrigued by Halloween and very curious about Halloween. But in their country, Halloween isn't really celebrated or certainly not on the level it is here in North America. So the one, two, three, four, five people in particular who I have become quite close with, they contacted me and said, oh my goodness, you live in, you love Halloween. I love Halloween, but I live in um, Portugal, Russia, Russia, Vietnam, um, and we don't have Halloween here. And I really don't get, I can't find any Halloween postcards. Would you do a, a direct swap with me so that I could get some Halloween postcards from you? And I am like, of course, <laughs> I would like nothing better, right? So I use Halloween as an example of what can bring two people together and find common ground and in turn become really good pen pals based on the mutual love and great admiration for something like Halloween. So you might be somebody who loves, I don't know, Harry Potter. You might be somebody who's very into hot air balloons. And maybe you, you get a, you get a request from somebody on post crossing who says, I also love hot air balloons. Would you like to exchange postcards about hot air balloons? And if you get the right vibe and the right, you know, interaction with that person, you can go on and continue to swap postcards. Um, like I do with my friend Lisa, who lives in Texas. She and I have been swapping postcards for quite a while, long before COVID. And it was the same thing. I found her, she was randomly selected for me. And in my postcard, I said, I love Halloween. And she was like, oh, me too. So here we are all these years later. And um, that's just, you know, I, I like to think of it as sort of the, the universe coming together and connecting people in a very fun and interesting and unexpected way. Now, I do know people who don't who don't like that at all because it is too random. They want to have much more control over who they're sending postcards to, where they're sending postcards to, and why they're sending postcards. So if that's something that's really important to you, which is totally understandable, um, post crossing might not be the avenue for you if you are looking for active postcard or pen pals and people that you want to send letters to all kinds of stuff and trinkets and, and things in the mail, right? So you kind of have to decide how, what, where, and how. One thing that I will suggest, even if you're not sure that you're keen on how random post crossing is, it's good practice. For the price of a stamp and a postcard, it's excellent pro, uh, practice. You know, because sometimes it is a little bit daunting. You're like, what do I write to somebody that I don't even know? And who wants to know about the fact that I'm two hours west of Toronto, but two hours northeast of Detroit, right? Like, but you would be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people find that interesting. Um, now, let's get back to what postcards to send very quickly. Again, you don't have to go out and, and have this huge, huge, huge collection of postcards. If you have postcards that come from your city, your state or province, your country or territory, most 99% of the people on, on post crossing will be happy that you sent them a postcard from where you live. People love that. I love that. Um, 
because it, it, it really helps to personalize, especially if you're sending a postcard to somewhere, let's say in Finland or the Netherlands, again, Vietnam, South Korea, China, they've never heard of your, chances are they've never heard of where you live, right? So you can be like, here's a postcard from where I live. Or even if you live in Chicago and everybody's heard of Chicago, you can give them a little, you know, a little nugget of trivia about Chicago that somebody would never know, right? You can say, oh, I live in Chicago, but uh, we have 4,568 pizza restaurants. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just, you know. So, you know, you can always go to your local museum or somewhere, you know, a lot of times you can pick up some of these, what you might think is cheesy postcards from a variety store or an airport. And, you know, they cost a dollar each. Um, pick up a few of those and, uh, yeah, you know, just have some fun with it. Don't overthink it. Don't worry if you don't have a postcard that's on their wish list. Um, it's just a suggestion. If you happen to have something, that's great. Then they'll really appreciate that. Um, but it's it's not a requirement. Personally... I load up on postcard, postcards that have Mounties on them and maps of Canada because people love Mounties and people love maps of Canada because they like to see how big the country is, right? Um, the other thing that sometimes people will mention is a stamp. Could you please put a pretty stamp on it? Um, if you have nice stamps that you've purchased at your post office, great. If you don't have a nice stamp, <laughs> then don't worry about it. Some people will say, please don't overload the postcard with stickers and washi tape. You can take that into consideration. Um, I myself like to add a little bit of washi tape and I have bought some mini stickers. You know, because <laughs> it looks a little naked to me on the back without washi and, and some stickers. And so... That's all to say that this is a really great way to just get into the hang of writing a note to somebody that you don't know. And don't feel that you have to write, try and figure out how to write your whole life story on the back of a postcard. They're really just looking for a few lines. And they, it's really the thrill of, of um, getting the postcard in the mail um, from a random fellow snail mail enthusiast, um, right? So, um, it is, it is a lot of fun to get the postcards. It is a lot of fun to, to see what kind of postcards people have that they send to you, you know, what kind of postcards that, that come from different countries and, um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you my profile. I'll show you the kinds of things that I've put on that I like. Um, we'll just randomly, or sorry, we'll just quickly go through the, the site. I'll give you a quick overview of it. I don't want this video to be super duper long, so I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions, by all means, please do leave them in the, in the comment section and I will get back to you. Um, I'm not a prolific post-crossing person, um, you will find as you go through profiles, you'll see some people have sent 10,000 postcards, 12,000 postcards, 13,000. I mean, it is insane. Some people are just postcard writing fanatics. I think I've sent 191, <laughs> right? But anyways, if this is, if you're looking for a place to start, I highly recommend. The other thing is, you know, you can commit to one or two postcards and if you don't like it, then you can move on and find another uh, platform to um, investigate and try out and I don't know, see if you like that better. And then if you decide there isn't something else better and you want to come back to pro post crossing, you can always do that too, right? So, okay, let's turn this around and I'll show you um, on, on screen so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are on the post crossing site. Now you can see here's my profile. And yeah, <laughs> I've only sent 191 cards. Um, 
And here is my profile and what I've talked about. So the one thing you'll notice at the top here, I have, I have said um, that I sent a card out without the number and what I felt terrible. So it does happen. Just know that if you do send a card out and you forgot to put the identification number on it, there are ways that post crossing can go in and help you find the card and, and help you connect with the person who is going to get a postcard without a, without an identification number on it. It's not the worst thing ever, but, but it's imperative that <laughs> you don't do it. Right. So when I, when I'm, when I'm addressing the cards, usually the first thing that I put in is the identification number right at the top. Um, here, this card here, I'll show you. See, it says postcard right here. Postcard CA-122651. So I sent this card to Germany. So when I started this, getting ready to send this postcard out, what I always do now as a matter of habit, at the top of the postcard, I write the, the identification number. Then I put the date underneath it. And a lot of times you'll find people like to add in the weather and it's kind of a fun little thing to do and then once I do those three things so the ID number the date and I just might say you know it's sunny and it's 15 degrees Celsius then I will go and put the address on the card so that I know by the time I'm, I'm writing the address down I've already put the ID number on it okay so I put that right at the top. I can get rid of those because that was quite a while ago. I go in and I talk about the fact that I love vintage things. I like thrift stores. Um, I like to sew. I'm into herbs. And here you see I write, I'm a huge fan of Halloween. Um, this just gives people an idea of what you're into. So, you know, with any luck, anybody's going to read this and not maybe send me a postcard with. I don't know, like trains on them or airplanes, because in nowhere have I mentioned that I'm a big fan of either of those. You know what I mean? Um, and most people, you will notice that they say, as I have here, I will enjoy whatever you send. But if you need some direction of what to send me, um, this might help. I love cats. Uh, I, you know, I enjoy postcards of cats, of course. Matryoshka dolls, Halloween, vintage, kings and queens, anything historical about your country. Because a lot of countries will have really interesting postcards um, that have historical sites, monuments, facts, those kinds of things. I go on to talk about gardens, bees, floral, owls and foxes. Um, and then I also put at the bottom, if you would like to do a direct swap, please write your address and I am happy to do so. Um, then here I, I've put in my, my Instagram information in case nobody really has, but you never know, right? So then you'll see up here underneath map and stat, stats, I write that I am interested in direct swaps. When you set up your profile, uh, let's go to edit my profile. Um, you can you can decide like they they ask for your birthday. You you can make it somewhere so that doesn't necessarily show up. But sometimes people will send you postcards for your birthday, so that's kind of fun. You can decide down here if you want your profile page to be visible to anyone who comes onto the post crossing site or just members. Um, so down here where it says preferences, check if you prefer to have several postcards traveling to the same country at the same time. So I've checked that off because I'm trying to get as many different countries as possible. Um, check if you would like to also send and receive postcards from your own country. And I do enjoy sending postcards within Canada. So I've checked that. And then at the bottom, check if you are interested in receiving requests 
for direct swaps. If you are not interested in doing that, don't check that box. But if you're looking, you know, to maybe find pen pals or people that you want to connect with on a more personal level, then, you know, check the box because you never know, right? Who's going to come along? Okay, so now let's go and see what it looks like. Here's the home page. Um, so here you have send a postcard, register a postcard. Um, down here are a bunch of interesting stats. You see who's sending who a postcard and to where. And if you're feeling a little bit nosy, <laughs> you can click on and it'll show you the postcard that was sent. So this cute little postcard was sent from this gal in Japan to this gal in Finland. That's super cute. And then there's a little map here that shows you where it's going. And approximately, so here we have that it's going to, it should take about 12-ish days to get there and how many miles. So you will notice up here at the top left where it says postcard JP and then the big number. JP are the, are the letters so that you know, she knows, everybody knows that this card is coming from Japan right and so canada the beginning letters are ca us is us etc etc so you can have some fun um just randomly looking through strangers sending postcards to each other and you can click on the profiles here's norbert he lives in the northern part of germany he has sent well over 2000 postcards he is not interested in direct swaps but here you can see his favorites are lighthouses fireworks black and white photos locomotives the uh the what you call it i never say this word the northern lights pinup landscapes um but again you will also find that people do enjoy getting even though they don't always say it they will enjoy getting postcards um, if, uh, with the flag, flag of your country. That's always fun too. Okay. So let's go in and see what it looks like when you, we want to send a postcard. So you can see right here, I already have one traveling, right? So I have 12 postcards in total. I have one that I chose earlier today or I picked. So I have 11 left. So let's go in and send a postcard. So there's a few things that they just remind you of every time you do this. You're going to be given a postcard ID and you must write that on the postcard, which we talked about it. That For me, that goes on before the date and the weather. A copy of the dress that you need will also be sent to your email. So if for some reason you can't find the, the address on post cost crossing, it will be emailed to you. You've read the community guidelines that basically says, don't be a jerk. <laughs> and then, so then you tick this, I've read the notes and I want to receive an address of where I'm going to send a postcard. So we're going to request an address and then I'm going to hide the address just out of uh, respect for um, this lovely young woman here. But it is going to the U.S., which I have to say is a little bit interesting because I don't often get the U.S. So we can look down here and things that she likes. Um, so she's here. I used to have a pen pal in the past and enjoyed it so much that I thought I would try out post crossing. I also enjoy receiving items from different countries and learning about different cultures and thought this might be a great way to explore. Absolutely. Right. So that's just a quick little, um, yeah, she's just, you know, basically everybody's the same. I'm happy with whatever you're going to send me. Now, what you will notice here beside the address is print address and upload photo. You can see, because you can see here, she's got her favorite postcards. 99% of the time you will see, you can see postcards that people have sent. This is a whole list of things that she has sent. 
So every time you click on something, you can, no, oh, not that one. Let's go back home. Right, you obviously can see the postcards that people have sent because you can see them here. Because the person, before you send off the postcard, you should take a photo of it and then you upload it. Um, so that when the person goes in and they register the postcard, so here, so if I was to get a postcard um, from, let's say again, it's going to come from, I don't know, pick a country, let's say, uh, I don't know what this is, there, that's from Denmark, I think, you would put in that, the two beginning letters of the country, then in this box, you put in all the numbers. You might want to write a little message. Thanks a lot. I really love the postcard. Made me really happy. Then when you register the postcard, when you hit this button here, um, the picture of the postcard that you took is going to pop up. Now, if for some reason you have forgotten and you didn't upload a picture of the postcard for your pen pal, then they will be able to take a, po a picture of the postcard themselves and upload it from their end. But as a courtesy, it is nice if you, if you go ahead and, and upload a photo of the postcard for them, right? Um, because that's how, you know, that's part of how this whole thing goes around, right? See, all these people here have photos of the postcard that's really cute so that was from japan to the u.s that's very interesting sometimes you know if you want a break from regular social media and the mindless scrolling of tiktok or instagram or whatever it's kind of fun to come in and look at all the postcards that were sent that's gorgeous that's from the netherlands to the u.s um, you go back home again, you can see, let's see what this postcard, crazy cat lady, oh, oh, you got to be fast, <laughs> I didn't even get to see what the crazy cat lady sent, all right, let's see what this postcard is from the U.S. to the U.S., okay, that one didn't have far to go, 471 miles, uh, that's funny. So yeah, so, you know, go in, have a look around, get yourself set up. The nice thing is, of course, that you can always go in and change what your preferences are, or you change what you want people to know. It's very easy to do. That's really pretty. Get yourself some postcards, you know, you can buy, get them on Amazon. Like I said, get them at a museum. Um, you can make some of your own. Some People might put in their profile that they don't want handmade postcards. Um, sometimes you'll see people say, I don't want um, advertising postcards. And what that usually means is that sometimes there's these freebie postcards that for advertising, like literally, like, I don't know, like to buy refrigerators or TVs or something. And sometimes people use those and it's kind of like, really? Like you couldn't, uh, I don't know, like a, a real postcard, you know? So that's what that means. Please no advertising postcards. That's cute. That's super fun. Um, now, if for some reason um, you really like this postcard, down here it says uh, favorited this postcard. If you hit this heart, it's going to say one, favorited this postcard and if i'm correct both of these post crossers will get notification that this postcard has been hearted so it's a kind of a nice way to be a part of the post crossing community so okay i think that's it i'm gonna leave it there um what i will do is when i get these two postcards that are traveling now one to the states and one to slovakia when i get those cards filled out i will put a photo of them in the community tab here on youtube 
and on my Instagram page so you guys can see what the backs of the postcards look like and um, I'm gonna send them some Mountie because <laughs> I love sending Mounties um, so you guys can get an idea um, of what of what I've done if you are interested so I hope that that will give you some information that you will need to check out post crossing like I said it's free go in set yourself up send a few postcards see how you feel check it out that's it thanks for watching everybody um, if you have any questions again please don't hesitate to ask um, you know what I always say at the end of each video speak kindly to yourselves enjoy your journal and your snail mail pen pal process and until the next video mwah! Take care, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.